Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Thanks for joining me once again. This time around, we've got a Corgi Whiz Wheels Ford Escort Mexico Mark 1. Did I not mention I've got my own T-Mail store now with some of my own designs? If not, please check a look in the description below and have a quick look. If you can't do your own self-promotion, where can you do it? So, getting straight on with this car then. A while back I did a poll on my YouTube channel, which car do you want me to see restored? Out of this version, the Corgi Whiz Wheels version, or the Hot Wheels? And overwhelmingly, it was the Corgi version. I can only assume it's probably more to do with the nostalgia more than anything, because personally I prefer the Hot Wheels version. I think it's more in proportion. I think it's got a lot more going for it, but you guys made the call and I went with this Corgi Whiz Wheels version, or you went with the Corgi Whiz Wheel version. It does look, I always keep saying this, like a toy. They are toys, but when you do look at them, I think because of the little basic wheels they made back then, you do look a little bit childlike, as daft as it is to say that. I think the rear arches look a little bit funny. The wheels don't sit right on the front in the arches. It wasn't a livery anybody knew. It was just a generic thing. So I have made videos cracking straight on with it, how to remove these little rivets. But I'll just quickly show you in real time, these Corgi versions, I don't know what it is. They just all off as simple as that they take literally seconds if drilled right and they fall apart really really simply and as always I'll get straight on to the underneath of it and have a quick look inside and nothing out of the ordinary you've got a little interior no what no other little additional pieces other than the windscreen assembly the wheels and axles are pressed into this metal base a little bit harder to get out than the plastic versions they seem to pull out a little bit easier because of this little metal bit in the middle but i'll get cracking straight on with removing the paint again i normally do a video on this but i'm just quickly showing you it's taken me about three or four attempts at this one it was really i don't know if it's because it's the age of it really really hard to get off but nevertheless take a look at my uh, description below at the other videos to how to remove it and we'll get a better idea of how to do that I just wanted to quickly show you then the windscreen and the interior. It's got this little escort written on it and it makes me smile. 40 odd years ago, somebody would have etched this in there, scribed it in there because it's all hand done. So some guy, if he's still around or girl still around, hand did these all them years ago. And I think a little bit of nostalgia. I think it's quite interesting, quite cool to have that still inscribed on there somewhere on that tool. It's great. Now onto this base. I am going to try and keep this more of a safari car because of this front end. It's got like a little um, bumper or something or other on the front where the headlights are. So I wanted to try and make this more of a safari car initially. And I'm just quickly showing you removing these wheels, which is hard, as I say, to do. You're just ripping them off with a pair of pliers. But the base itself as I always do with the metal ones, I just use this wire brush, wire wheel, sorry. Very quick, very simple, simple to do. Four or five minutes, and it comes up an absolute dream. It really does. Better than trying to dip it in any solution or hand buff it with some other little Dremel tool. Just stick it straight on this industrial type wheel, if you like, and it comes up great. But in the meantime, Having had three attempts at dipping this body, it comes up, as I always say, all the paint that's hidden, it comes up with some quite nice detail, albeit with a few little damaged pillars on the front there, which I'm going to address in a minute. But you can actually see the, the writing, the Ford now on the, on the bumper, sorry, on the bumper, on the boot and on the bonnet. It looks really good. So a lot of scope on this car. So I'm pretty glad you all chose this one now in the end. A bit like when I did uh, the rebuild on a Porsche not so long ago. Just needs a little bit of a straightening out of these eight pillars on the front. And the roof's going to need straightening out a little bit more than sticking it down on the anvil. So I'll just stick it in my vise now and give it a few light taps 
on the offending corner just to sort of pull it down or pull it out a bit if you like just rejig it and hopefully in the meantime straighten some of them posts there was a very hairline crack in the other side so I suspect both of these are going to split now and yeah they yeah they're both split which is no big deal no big drama makes it a little bit easier dare I say it just to manipulate it round a little bit just to bend it out so a few little light taps here and there and we can straighten this one up but again you can see the, some of the details on this it's not bad for an old car quite good quite chuff with this one it's okay so i'll just give it some light knocks with a hammer just on these a pillars just to try and push it in a little bit it's easy to say not to be bull handed with it but you know or ham fisted but if you're not too careful it can end up making more of a bad job than a good job so just bent it out a little bit and it all seems to look a lot straighter than it did still some slight distortions in the in the pillars but at least it's straight and at least the roof straightened up a little bit so what i'll do again like i did on this or the Porsche a while back is I'll just use some of this green putty just to fill in the gaps. I'm not going to super glue it this time. Last time I used some of this little rocket dust and super glue just to bridge it a little bit, but I think it was a bit more of an overkill. And if anything, the glue dried that hard, it was a little bit more difficult to sand and sculpt afterwards. So I'm just going to go straight on with this putty. And as I'm doing it a little bit thinner this time, it should in theory dry a lot quicker than it did before and just giving it a little light tap and just molding it into place and we'll let that dry for a little while but whilst it does i'm just going to go through some of the imperfections and just give it a little bit of a light tickle with this modeling file and some of these windscreen apertures but other than that this is not bad at all some of the seams are a little bit odd, so I will address them seams on that back quarter. But going over it again with this modelling file, it is a modelling file, although some people do think it's my wife's nail file, and they do look very, very similar. Nail files for, for ladies, or, or a man if you're that way inclined, can be a little bit coarse. These come in super fine, fine, I don't know what grit they are, they're just called fine, extra fine, super fine, medium fine, so whatever that fine refers to i don't know but they are very very good models, so if you're interested in them now onto the wheels i've got a selection of these wheels and they are unbranded they're off a big bulk load off ebay got like a hundred for something like nine quid they're really really good 50 sets 100 no 100 pairs 50 sets yeah it was a lot anyway so i'll try and find it and put the link in the description but all i'm going to do is just take them off these axles at the moment because you've got a little for one for a better word another little nipple on the inside of the wheel a little bit that's a little bit it stands out so that is causing the wheels just to flare out a little bit from the chassis and just rub on the wheel arches on the car so if i just whip this little bit off now and trim it in or say trim it in cut it off altogether it will bring the wheel track in a little bit and it'll fit nice and snug right under the arches and there'll be no messing around at all with that afterwards so just take care if you're going to do this i've done it on other cars before so watch for the bits flying away and obviously watch for the sharp knife and what i'm going to do is keep one end on as per normal and i'm simply once actually another reason why i'm doing it this way is because of this little metal axle holder on the inside i didn't want to cut that away it still can utilize that so that's the reason why i'm threading it in as well so all i'm going to do simply is once i've done it on both sides i'm just going to glue the other wheel in so it will run freely on the other side but then the side that's glued is going to sort of pull the axle in a little bit so it's a bit more like a limited uh limited shit, i suppose you could call it 
part of my uh, language, but uh, there you go. I'll try and bleep that out. And there you go. It sits quite nice. It rolls quite nice. So I'm sort of thinking now it's probably a bit more tarmac specky rather than safari specky because the wheels are a lot smaller. So if this was a real car, I don't think it would be quite forgiving with them size rims on it on an off-road format. So it's going to probably a bit of an iteration of both or I could do with most of the cars. It's going to be my artistic license on it. So probably will go down the track of a bit of bit of both worlds really. So on to this interior then. The I'm going to keep this front seats because the old cars back in the day did have quite small front seats, front little buckets didn't have the big bucket seats we see nowadays but I'm just going to remove these rear ones or at least remove the tops of these rear ones just so I can fabricate out of my beloved styrene just some sort of rear part to this car so it is a little bit tough but I hope none of you now are having a heart attack that I'm cutting away some classic old 40 year old thing even though it has got that little bit of nostalgic escort hem written on the bottom but you know I always say when people have commented why are you butchering some of these cars they're really rare they might be rare but they'll be even more rare when they're a one-off after I've made them so to be quite honest it's mine it was mine as a kid so it's now getting a overhaul I want it to look so a bit of styrene now not a great deal on this car I'm going to do in terms of styrene fabrication but I'm just going to make sort of a rear just a rear end to it if you like internally so just remove them rear seats and it's just going to be a very simple one piece job I'm going to bend it to form a really thin piece I don't know off the top of my head which thickness or gauge of material this is but it literally is it's less than 0.5 of a mil. It's really, really thin. It's almost paper thickness. If you're going to measure it in GSM like paper, it's almost like a 400 GSM type weight. So simple folding it, simply cutting it. And what we'll be left with is the sort of the basis of just a clean rear part of the car, really. I'm going to, once I've glued it in situ I'm just going to put some little all the touches on it just to sort of make it look like it's a, a part of the press in part pressing part of the body in white part of the actual shell of the car I'm just going to use some smaller little thin square sections of this styrene very simply cut no method in my madness to this and i'm not going off any specific image just off my head what i think is going to look okay and a little bit of this mac just to put it in and hold it in place it does get a little bit fiddly at this scale as i always say And as quick as that, we've just a little bit of a straighten up. We'll start to make a little bit of headway on this rear shelf. So jumped a little few steps and put some more ribs in that rear, what would be a parcel shelf, I guess. Um, I don't even know if they called them a parcel shelf back then in the car. I thought parcel shelves were hatchback style cars. I don't quite know, actually. Where the old fellow would have put his straw hat on the rear I suppose there I'm just putting a little bit of detail I suppose in to make it look like this pressing just by putting another thickness of the same material on just to give it sort of a raised look if you like and nothing more I can do really internally on that other than obviously fit a roll cage really thin little pieces i'm going to use for this because i think sometimes it can be a bit overkill if 
you use two thicker bar tube whatever you want to call it it sort of looks a little bit out of scale so i'm just going to use some little half mil diameter rod and i've just drilled into that little interior piece just because it holds it a little bit better so i can start it off nice and easy glue it in place and just be away with it and all i'm going to do like i always do is just follow the contour of the well the outside of the car really and the other benefit of using really thin material like this you haven't got to heat it up or dip it in hot water to begin to bend it the thicker they are you know it does become difficult what i will say is when you do bend the thinner material if you use some of the mech to stick it together just be careful on those bends because it then tends to split it tends to fall apart so just be careful how much bending and stress you're putting on it and then what you're going to glue to that joint effectively but as you can see we're starting now to take a bit more shape on the interior and just snip a little bit off just to get it to fit nice and snug and jump into the second part it's held in the front end by the hole that i've drilled and then just bonded in the rear with this mech so i'm just going to put a dab of glue on well actually i'll just quickly offer it up just to show you it start to come to shape and that back end looks pretty good actually that rear part now it does it always looks a little better when you've primed it and painted it as well when it's the two-tone colors as we're going along now it does it is a bit hard to spot um the vision of it if you like for one for a better word just put a bit of super glue on that front bit and a little bit of activator just to speed it up and harden it quicker and once it's dried i can just trim off that little white part just protruding out yeah i'll just yeah, it's dried now i'll just quickly nip that bit off and just again sits quite nice all round so i'll just add a few little cross beams cross parts i suppose looks good in that back window as well you can see it nice and clear so i'll just put some little down tubes on that side bit and some bits on the top here and there you have a very quick interior albeit this time but one that i think will suit the car pretty good so i'll quickly get on and start painting it all now i'm just going to give them both a quick lick of primer as i always do some people just go straight on with paint at this stage i always like to prime them and again with the interior i'll just give it a quick lick of gray primer just you can see a, you see it a little bit better now how it's sort of come together there i should make my own little car out of styrene actually that'd be quite cool so the basis of this car is going to be white and actually it's one of the best finishes from it, considering it didn't need any real buff in this casting so all that hard enamel that took ages to get off originally it's probably coated it really really well because it hasn't really had that many dings and dents and chips in it so it's come out really well used a bit of white primer there on on the interior because i thought well, if i'm going to have a white car i should really have painted the interior in white because it's just a little bit easier to leave it all white and, and paint these details in now so i'll quickly go around and detail it up now nothing too over the top because there wasn't a lot in the cars back then i guess so just the dashboard i'm not going to go too over the top and put all the little time and equipment and everything in this one i'm just gonna leave it sort of basic if you like on the inside so i always use these tamia tamia get me words right tamia acrylics xf the flat paints 
and X being the gloss paint. So I tend to use a lot of the flat colours, so it's nice and matty. Uh, matted, matty, matty looking effect on the dashboard and what have you. And I do, do enjoy the painting, I have to say. A few tunes on in the background and all's good. Uh, I'll do the roll bar silver. Some people in the past have said, why have you done the roll bars the same colours as, this car, as the cars? Well, the reference pictures have gone off, tend to have the roll bars the same colour as the cars, but for this one, I am going to do it silver. And then onto the grill, just no need to rush it, just take your time and just paint a bit of gloss black in there. And then a slight wash on this front radiator guard, ball bar, whatever you want to call it on the front. So some of the black acrylic paint and I just, you know, heavily put some thinners on it and just washed it out just to give it a bit of depth and then again with a bit more of the thinners just go over some of them main bars on the front just to wash it off again if you like just to get it nice and thin and then finally interior wise i'm just going to put a, a bit of this vinyl sticker in again just to replicate a couple of harnesses so i only use the vinyl really because it's self-adhesive more than anything so i know technically that the belts are fabric so i will look at getting some of that i've got some left over of some 124 scale car somewhere so i should slither that down a little bit better really but for this job i've used some of the stickers again and just a little bit of silver on there for the buckles and the mounting points and we're pretty much done on that so on to doing the livery then I've made my own decals again and I've gone for arguably one of the most famous escorts one of the original or well, the original London to Mexico which spawned the escort Mexico cars I've done it in the Telegraph magazine livery for the FEV car FEV1H registered car and it you know on on, on First off, when I started doing this, I thought oh, there's not much to it really, just a stripe along the side, a couple of sponsors. But actually, when you see the finished piece, it does come out pretty good actually. I'm quite happy with that. And my original plan of making this a safari car, I was going to put some mud flaps on it, do some of this, it's got like these front canards on the front to stop all the mud flying up, I suppose, and some bars going from the A-post down to the front wing. But I've got quite a few of these escorts piling around, Mark 1s, Mark 2s. So I'm going to obviously get around to doing a big range of them. So we'll have a look at that at the end how it comes. So I haven't quite done a safari one yet, but as with most of them, I'm going to make my own little windscreens as well. I don't like trying to get these old ones back to its former glory once they've got lots of scratches in the pretty much for the bin, in my opinion. So. I use some of this clear styrene, no, it's from Evergreens, it's not technically styrene, I've mentioned this before. I could probably use some of the plastic inserts from some packaging, you know. And it's nice and thin, it cuts really easy, fits in really easy, and as simple as that, once it's glued, bonded in situ, it comes out really, really smart. So, you can still sort of see a bit of the decals on the side there, so without any further ado, this is how it originally looked, a rather old, 40 odd year old car, well played with, pretty good condition, albeit a bit broken. And here we have my finished take on FEV1H, the London to Mexico rally car, the Escort Mark 1. As I said, I was going to do a big safari, as I just mentioned, but I think these rims sort of in the end, once I put them on, sort of spawn me away from it. So it's my take on it. And as always, I do change a few little things. The sticker didn't go all the way around the back. The Telegraph magazine, you can see there on the rear was where the Ford badge was, but I didn't rub away the Ford. I didn't want to rub away the Ford. So I've changed it around a little bit. The numbers, obviously, I always change to 75 for my number. And I think, yeah, overall, I'm really happy with this one. I um, so I could have gone too crazy with it, but I didn't really want to, actually. I wanted to sort of keep it 
I'll say sort of detailed, but not sort of detailed, if that makes any sort of sense. But here's my little take on it. I've got plenty more of these, so I have promised some other subscribers I was going to do the Alan Mann one and the Broadspeed one, and that I will do. But I've got a couple of Zach Speed Mark Twos I want to crack on with, so I'll probably do that. As always, thanks for looking. Please look in my description if you want a bit of merch and look at my T-Mill store. Thank you very much. All the best.